start reading The Horseman and the Weaver. The Horseman and the Weaver. Once upon a time there lived a king who reigned over the heavens. He had a lovely daughter that knew how to weave the most beautiful clothes in the world. The king was jokingly said the princess, my weaver. The princess loom would rattle and rock all day long as the shuttle danced in and out among the threads. Seated there, she would make them into clothes that would be envy of any young woman. She spent her childhood there in front of that loom until it came time for her to get married. The king searched his kingdom far and wide to find the suitor for his daughter. One day he met a young man whom he liked very much. This young man will make a fine husband for my daughter. The king told himself. The young man was a horseman. He had loved cattle ever since he was a little child, so he was very happy with his work. One beautiful spring day, when all of the flowers were in bloom and the birds were singing, the weaver married the herdsman. All the king's subjects were overjoyed at the news. After the wedding, the young couple spent all their time frolicking about the fields together. The herdsman deserted his cows. Eventually, the cows wandered into the lower garden, trampled all over the lower flower bed, and ruined it. The weaver no longer wove any beautiful clothes. A thick layer of gray dust gathered, gathered on her loom. When the king knew that was happening, he became very worried. He called the two lovers to him and said, Son, you are still a horseman. You must take good care of your cows. Then he looked at his daughter and said, You must not abandon your loom. But the horseman and the weaver had been married at a yo very young age and were still really just children. They didn't realize the importance of what the king was saying to them. They kept ro roaming the fields and merrily playing games with, with each other. The king became very angry this time. He scolded them at the top of his lungs, saying, How can you fat yourselves if you don't do any work. You have not obeyed me. I have no choice but to punish you. Pointing at his son-in-law, he said, From now on, the horseman must live in the eastern sky. Then he turned to his daughter, And the weaver must live in the western sky. When the horseman and the weaver heard this, they both cried. Oh, Father, please forgive us. We know we were wrong to play in the fields all day. We promise to do our share of work. Please let us stay together. We love each other, other more than anything. But the king was not moved by their tears. The herdsman and the weaver were forced to part. The herdsman went east and the weaver went west. They were so sad that eventually the king began to feel sorry for them. Finally, he decided to let them meet once a year on the banks of the Milky Way River. All year long, the two lovers counted the days and nights thinking of meeting each other again. Both now realized that they had been disobedient to the king. The day finally came when they were allowed to have their yearly meeting with high hopes, each headed for their meeting place by the Milky Way River.
But when they reached it, the river had become so wide and the night so dark that they could not see each other. The herdsman and the river stood on the banks of the Milky Way River and cried. Tears rolled down their cheeks and into the river. The water from their tears flowed down into the river and became rain. The rain then fell to the earth until the ground was wet and soggy. The seas rose higher and higher. The fields and gardens of kingdom were floated. Not only that, the homes of king's subjects were swept away in the waves. The animals of the kingdom became very alarmed indeed. They all met to decide what to do. Each animal took turns telling everyone at the meeting what they thought would be the good way to stop the flood of tears. Some made low grunts and some made high screams. Some of them whistled when they talked. Finally, one animal came up with a suggestion. We must help the herdsman and the weaver get together again. Otherwise, this rain will never stop. Yes said another. Let's build a bridge for them. That's it, exclaimed another animal. We must build a great bridge. All of the animals agreed, but none of them knew how to go about building a bridge, as animals don't usually know how to build bridges. They all lay around looking at once, one, on, one another, twisting their tails in silence. Finally, some crows and magpies chirped up. Let us birds do it, said one. We can fly to the Milky Way River, said another, and make ourselves into a bridge. So all of the crows in the world got together and made a big flock with their cousins, the magpies, and flew up to the Milky Way River. They flew tightly together, holding on to each other with their talons. Soon they stretched from one bank to, of the river to the other. The herdsmen and the weaver were very surprised to see a bridge of birds. What it is? They exclaimed. Now we can cross the Milky Way River and be together again. The herdsman and the weaver ran across the backs of the birds. In the middle of the bridge of birds, they met and held each other in tight. By around this time, the heavy rain slowed to a drizzle. To a drizzle. But then the two lovers had to return to their homes in the east and the west for yet another lonely year. After that, on the seventh day of the seventh moon of every year, all the crows and the magpies would fly to the Milky Way River to form a bridge. The horseman and the weaver would meet on that special day, every year by crossing the river on the backs of the kind flock of birds. Frogs and magpies did not always lose their feathers once a year. Ever since they started forming flocks to fly to the Milky Way River, and ever since they started helping the horsemen and the princess see each other, they have lost their feathers after the seventh day of the seventh moon. Now you know why everyone in the kingdom treats them kindly. The end. Yay! 
So this is kind of sad love story, but animals make them meet together. <laughs> So the next story is kind of a little funny because it's how the lazy men get punished. So I think you will like it. <laughs> so the next story is the lazy man. The lazy man. Once there lived a young man who spent his whole day doing nothing. Even during the Buddhist busiest time of the farming season, he just slept and snored while the rest of his small village went to work. After years of waiting for the situation to improve, his wife could no longer keep her temper under control. In her loudest possible voice, she yelled right at his ear, Get out into the field and do some work. That man just rolled over on his side and frowned much like someone that had been suddenly awakened in the middle of the night. Don't bother me, he said. Why do you keep bothering me when I'm so tired? His wife had heard him say this many times before, so became all the angrier. How can you spend a day sleeping? You are sleeping right through the peak of the farming season. She complained. Even our poor children go out to the fields to work. The whole family will starve to death if you keep on roping around like this. The man held his hands over his ears and grumbled. I'd better off if I found somewhere else to sleep. Leave then, now, yelled his wife. For once, the man jumped out of the bed and ran off. His wife was so surprised at the speed with which he moved that she just stood there with her mouth open. The man was walking down the road when he saw an ox chewing its cud. It was half asleep, resting in the midday sun. He stood and looked at the ox very with envy. He thought to himself, If only I were an ox. There was no shade along that part of the road. So he continued his stroll toward the ridge of nearby mountain. When he reached the ridge, he saw a shanty with a straw roof. The hut was so old that it was barely standing. Inside an old man was very busy making something. The lazy man stopped to look, but because not because he was ambitious, but he had never seen such an old man so busy working on something. Excuse me, he said to the old man. What are you making? The old man held up a mask and grunted. I'm making an ox mask. The lazy man laughed at the man at the old man. A mask of an old box hat? Why would anyone work so hard to make something so worthless? It would be far better to just sleep. Now the old man left. He left a hurt healer left then the lazy man had. There is no such thing as worthless work, he said. Is that what you think? asked the lazy man. Well, in that case, good luck to you and your noble task. As he turned to go, the old man grumbled softly. This make might come in handy for someone who doesn't want to work. Come in handy, you said. How? the lazy man replied. If you really want to know, why don't you try, out, try it on? 
said the old man as he quickly placed the mask on the lazy man's face. Then he tied the leather strap he had been hiding to the iron ring that went through the nose of the mask. No matter how hard the lazy man pulled and pulled, the mask would not come off. Help me get this thing off, he begged. It's very hot, but his words sounds very strange. They were very low and gruff, not unlike the noise of noise an ox makes. He made a noise that sounds like moo moo. The lazy man ran around in circle, brawling just like an ox. Moo moo, he cried. The old man held the leather strap and led the lazy man away, ox mask and all. Along the way, the lazy man heard the sounds of men laughing and arguing. From the smell, he could tell that he was in the market where oxen were bought and sold, and that he was fenced in a small area crowded with other oxen. He could barely hear, hear the old man talking to a local farmer. Now remember, the old man said, make sure you keep him away from the radish field. He'll die on the spot if he eats radish. Then he heard the farmer say, some oxen sure are pet peculiar. Then the lazy man was led to a new home, just like an ox from the market. It was the hottest part of on already very hot day. Hurry up, you stupid ox! Why are you acting so lazy? The farmer yelled as he hit the back of the lazy man with a big stick. I'm not an ox, but the man complained. I'm a man wearing a mask, but his words sound like, just like the sounds an ox makes. So convinced was the farmer that he hit him even harder. The man stopped mooing and thought to himself, I guess this is my punishment for being so lazy. Once at the farmer's house, he worked all day long. He even had to pull a heavy wagon. When the sun had set at the farmer's house, the lazy man was led to his new pen. He was very tired, but he couldn't sleep. All he could do was cry and think about his family. I wonder how my wife and children are, he cried. I'd rather be dead than be an ox, he said to himself. Suddenly, he remembered what he had heard the old man tell the farmer while he was being sold at the market. That's it. I'll eat some radishes. With that, with what little strength he had left, the lazy man broke out the pen. He went over to where the farmer had left a basket of radishes and picked up a hoop full. So this is what it's like to die, he said. Then he closed his eyes and beat down hard on a radish. Just as he did this, the ox mask fell off his face. What's happening? He wondered out loud. He was so happy he didn't know what to do. Soon the ox hide fell off his back, and he was a man again. He was still there when the farmer came out of the feed his animals. Hey, what's going on here? The farmer shouted at the lazy man. The lazy man was so happy to be a human being again that he actually tried to explain the whole story of the farmer. Then he head back to his family. Once home, he set out of the work in the fields and worked hard all day. His wife never discovered the reason for the change in her husband. But from that day on, he was known as the hardest working man in the village.
The end. <laughs> no, 